Hello world and welcome back. Today's topic is pretty simple. What's the difference between an enum class and a sealed class? In general, an enum is a commonly used option for representing a fixed set of options. As an example, let's say that our application offers a predetermined set of account types. We can actually use some static values for that if we have no other um, knowledge about the enum class in a coding language. So we can use a constant val here. We can see that I've represented a premium, a celebrity in a standard type of accounts. And then we can actually perform some business logic on those values. So if we were to actually print a statement for every account type, we would have to use a when, but in this when there is no compile time safety. I've actually had to revert to an else statement here because if we don't, then the compiler will simply say that the when statement should be exhausted. Um, because what happens if it's something else? There's no way to constrain that set of values that we've passed into this uh, method. And also, if we need to list the account types that we have, there's no way to actually do it, other, other than hard coding every single uh, value that we've set here. Also, what happens if we add a new one? There's no way to know, of course, and then we'd have to remember to change our code at every single place in our application, which is definitely going to be error prone. So there should be a better way. In computer programming, an enumerated type, that's also called enumeration or enum, is a data type consisting of a set of named values that we call elements or members. Now, those names are usually identifiers that behave as constants within the language. In Kotlin, we can use an enum class to represent those account types that we have in our business case like this. Here, I've declared an enum class called account type, and it contains three identifiers, the possible values that we have. And what this unlocks us is the possibility to actually have a very predefined set of those values and have the compiler know that this is the only possibility that we can have. So if we pass a account, an account type um, in this print account type method, now in the when statement, there is no need for an else branch because this basically is already exhaustive. The compiler already knows that there's no other account type. And also, if we have to add a new one, so let's say we add, uh, let's say moderator type, look what happens here. The compiler immediately nags that we have to either use an else branch, which we don't want to do this, this because we, it will negate the purpose of having a very specific set of types, or we can actually use, add the necessary moderator branch. And this is exactly what I'm going to do, add remaining branches. Thank you very much. And I'm going to actually change that to do into making something useful. This is a moderator account. Of course, this is a very dummy thing to do. We would actually have actual business logic here. But for our example, we can see that even if we had um, 20 other places where we had the when statement to actually check for the type of account, we would know ahead of compilation now. And what this also unlocks is another advantage of enum classes, which is having the values method on the account type uh, in a class. So this actually gives us a list of every possible account type that we can have. And by chaining that with a for each method and using a beautiful Kotlin syntax, we can actually print every single type that we can have. It's amazing. And there's also one other keyword that we can have, it's called ordinal, which actually gives us a position in the set that we have. So this position, this order here is not random. We can actually have a meaningful order in our set of account types. So for some reason, maybe celebrity uh, should be uh, last. So I can actually have celebrity be the last element. And if we take the celebrity type of account type, we can actually use that account type dot celebrity. And now if you use the ordinal, this returns an integer and it actually represents the position inside this type of array that we can have here. You can treat this as an array. So this is the advantage and it's perfect to represent a constant set of possible values using an enum class. Now this is where things get interesting. In Kotlin there is a silt modifier that you can put in front of a class name. 
So you can declare a class normally, but by putting the seal modifier in front, you actually control the hierarchy of this class. It provides more control over inheritance in the sense that the direct subclasses of a seal class are determined at compile time and cannot be added by external clients outside of the module where the seal class is defined. This means that each instance of a sealed class belongs to a fixed and known set of types that is determined when the class is compiled, so third-party clients cannot extend your sealed class in their code. Sealed classes are basically like abstract classes. You cannot use them directly, but you can extend them and also use them for polymorphic dispatching, like in our example here. We have put data in each account type and in the when statement, which is also exhaustive now at compile time without the need for an else statement, uh, you can see that there is a smart casting happening here by changing, by using the when statement. So it knows, the compiler knows that here we're talking about a standard type, so it gives us access to the username uh, variable that only exists in the standard class. And we can also use, we can also change a sealed class to a sealed interface, just like an abstract class and interface works when we don't have initial value in the original type. So here, if we remove, let's say, the, uh, we can remove the e subscription based from everywhere and turn this into an interface, uh, and basically remove those parentheses here. So basically we've transformed the sealed class to a sealed interface and everything works as it should but we're now missing the original data of the account type, which in some cases um, you want to. So seal classes are similar to enum classes. The set of values for an enum type is also restricted. In the enum um, class of Kotlin, every single uh, item within the enum class only exists once within the code. But here in the sealed interface or sealed class, you can have a class, which means we can have multiple instances of a standard, premium, or celebrity um, account types. But we can change that and actually mimic with a sealed class, we can actually mimic the functionality of an enum class by using an object keyword. So if you change this to an object, and of course you cannot give it values anymore, but you're basically doing the exact same thing. Of course, I'm going to remove that here. Um, so this is uh, a way we define a singleton in the Kotlin language. So the compiler can only create one um, object of th type standard. So this is one other difference. So in a, in, a, in a sense, you can actually mimic the functionality of an enum class using the sealed class or sealed interface but you cannot do the other way around, which means that with the enum class, you cannot mimic, you cannot perform the things that you want with a sealed class. That's why it's an enum uh, class on steroids. So let's recap. We use sealed classes and interfaces to express restricted hierarchies, but we use enum classes to express a set of values. A sealed class is an enum on steroids. With a sealed class, you can mimic the functionality of an enum class, but not the other way around. For representing simple sets of values, enums are still the preferred choice. Sealed classes are more difficult to serialize or deserialize, and they're not as easy to iterate over. You have to use reflection for that, so that's not good. They also do not have a natural order, which is also important in some use cases. However, there are certain situations where sealed classes with object subclasses may be preferred. For instance, if you think you might need to convert objects into classes at some point, seal classes may be a better option as they can store values. Also, when items need to hold data in the beginning, it's a clear case. We need classes, not merely enums. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.